Hi there, I'm Will Jones from Stone Circle Games, and today I'm going to give you a look inside the gameplay of our newest game, Horrible Hex. Horrible Hex is a tile-based strategy game for one to three players. Today we're just going to be dealing with the core version of the game, which is for two players. Let's take a look. The gameplay of Horrible Hex is pretty quick and easy to understand. When you open up the box, you'll see two things. First, your goal cards. Second, your hex tiles. When setting up the game, the first thing you'll want to do is turn all the cards and all the tiles face down and shuffle them. If you're a beginner to the game, you'll probably want to remove the two wild tiles from the game that have both of the symbols on them, just to make it a little easier. Then, take three of the hexes at random and place them face down in the center of the play area in a triangle. Each player should then draw two goal cards from the top of the deck and place them face up in front of themselves. That allows everyone to see what everybody is trying to achieve. When you're ready to begin, just flip the three tiles in the center of the table face up, and that's your starting board. A turn consists of two actions, one that's mandatory, one that's optional. The mandatory action is placing a tile. To do so, you'll take the top tile from the stack of unused face-down tiles and place it on the board anywhere you like, so long as it connects to all the other tiles. At no point in Horrible Hex ever is the group of tiles in the play area allowed to separate and form two or more separate groups. They always have to be contiguous. The other action, the one that's optional, is movement. Movement is at the core of Horrible Hex gameplay, and it's simple on the surface, but deceptively difficult to master. There are four types of movement within Horrible Hex. You can do one each turn. First off is a slide, as denoted by the single arrow. A slide is very simple. It allows the hex to move one space, or one hex width, along the direction that the arrow points. This movement can be blocked by other hexes, and as with all other movements, it can't separate the hex from the general pack of hexes on the table. The second type of movement is a push, denoted by the double arrow. A push functions exactly like a slide, except that in this case, if there are hexes blocking the movement, they can be pushed along in front of the one that you're trying to move. The third type of movement is a swap, denoted by the double-ended arrow. To use a swap, you simply exchange the positions of the hex in question and the hex that borders it on the side of the double arrow. You cannot use a swap if there is no adjacent hex right next to the double swap arrow on the tile you're trying to move. The fourth type of movement is a jump, as denoted by the curved arrow. This allows the hex in question to jump over the hex next to it. This is actually the only type of movement in hex that can allow a hex to move more than one space. A hex can jump over any number of hexes so long as they are in a straight line next to it. You can't, though, use a jump to jump zero hexes. There has to actually be at least one next to it. A jump can never function just as a slide. In order to move a hex, the symbol for the movement you're attempting must be present on the side of the hex that corresponds to the direction it is going. This means that the orientation of the hexes are very important, doubly so since nothing in the game can rotate a hex once it has been placed. When you're placing hexes, be very careful to make sure that the arrows are pointing in the directions that you want them to, because once it's on the table, it's set. On your turn, you may move something and you have to place something, in that order. Movement always comes before placement. Once you've placed your tile, your turn is over and it's your opponent's turn. Now let's talk scoring. Scoring in Horrible Hex occurs by achieving patterns as displayed on your goal cards. Scoring checks immediately after a movement, never a placement, which means you can never simply drop a tile into place to score a pattern, you actually have to move something into place. As soon as movement occurs, look at the board and see if any of the hexes on the table form the patterns formed by any player's goal card. Any number of goal cards from any number of players can be completed on a single turn, which means that yes, your movement might actually cause your opponent to score. As soon as any player completes one or more goal cards, completely wipe the board of all existing hexes, place them into a discard pile, and replace them with three new random tiles placed in a triangle as at the start of the game. You immediately score the card, placing it off to the side, and draw a new one, placing it face up in front of you. You'll always have two goal cards in front of you at any given time. As soon as one player completes three goal cards, they have won the game, Congratulations.
Thanks for watching this introduction to the gameplay of Horrible Hex. I hope you all learned a valuable lesson, and we'll see you next time. For Stone Circle Games, I'm Will Jones. Have fun. Mm -hmm.